Hi, this is Curious Tangents and I am Travis. And I have been curious as to what time is and is time real. As I upload this video, the new year has just passed, hopefully. And that means Earth has completed its revolution around the sun for 2019. Now, it's common thought that on your birthday, Earth is in the same position as it was when you were born. And that is completely logical and also completely wrong. We tend to believe that the logical answer equals the correct answer, but that is not necessarily true. As the Earth revolves around the sun, the sun revolves around the galaxy. More specifically, it revolves around Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. This black hole is to the sun and the rest of the galaxy what our sun is to our solar system. It keeps everything in gravitational pull. In fact, every 230 million Earth years, the sun completes one galactic year its full orbit around Sagittarius A. Interestingly, this means that one cosmic year ago, the first dinosaurs were emerging during the Triassic period. This also means that at no point in any of our lifetimes or in the duration of humankind has the Earth ever been in the same spot. Now, speaking of a long time ago, the first mechanical clocks were created in the 14th century. Previous to this, we used water clocks and candle clocks to tell the time. Neither could tell time down to the minute. Previous even to this, our ancestors would have used natural events to tell what time it was, such as the positioning of the sun or the phases of the moon or the tides. It was a literal land before time. But today we know what time it is. As I record this, it's 4.42 a.m. But why is it 4.42 a.m.? Well, Primarily because I'm bad at planning out my time. But why is it 4.42 a.m. for everyone else? The reason is also simple. It's because we all agreed that it would be 4.42 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right now. Asking this is a lot like asking why money is valuable. Now, money is valuable. However, none of its value is intrinsic. If you were alone on a desert island with nothing but piles of money, you would be alone on a desert island. If you were to say eat a $100 bill and a $1 bill, your diet would be equally poor. Money is valuable for the fact that we believe in its value. This is called an intersubjective concept. If I myself stop believing in the US dollar, then I'm just gonna be poor. But if we the people stop believing in the US dollar, then that's gonna hurt the global economy. Intersubjective values and concepts mean quite a bit to society. In fact, I'm willing to argue that they are the main reason society is able to exist. But that will be another video. So the value of money is real, but it's not as real as the money itself. Similarly, Timekeeping is real, but it's not as real as time itself. Which made me wonder if we all stop believing that today is January 8th, will it still be January 8th? I struggled with this question for a very long time until I realized that history had answered it for me. In 1582, Pope Gregory XIII changed the world over from the Julian calendar to the new Gregorian calendar. And in doing this, he also moved the date forward 10 days, meaning that nothing happened on October 5th, 1582, because October 5th, 1582 never happened, nor did the next 10 days. That calendar goes from October 4th to October 15th. An actual year, as in the amount of time that it takes the Earth to orbit the Sun, is about 365.26 days. And because of this, we have leap years like the one that we just entered, hopefully. Timekeeping is not as real as time itself. However, is the past as real as the now, the present, or for that matter, the future? Now, obviously the present has to be real. We can watch it tick along on this YouTube video. The present moment seems important. Our senses take in what is happening now minus biological delays. You see and hear me talking to you right now, and you can taste and touch and smell the outside world. The belief that only the present is real is called presentism, and it's logical, but not necessarily correct. The B theory of time, or eternalism, states that all moments in time are equally real, which means that the future which this YouTube video is ticking to 
must already exist in order for the video to move forward at all. This would mean that the flow of time is just an illusion. This was quite shocking for me, especially learning that this is the most accepted theory of time. We tend to believe that we are of some grandiose cosmic importance, until the cosmos shows us different. We believe that the sun revolved around us, because to a person who has never seen the earth from a lens other than the earth, that makes perfect sense. Similar to a person watching the sun go by in those days, we are watching our lives go by through time. We believed that our sun was of significance, that it was the center of the universe, to find only that it was one in the hundreds of billions within our galaxy, and that our galaxy was one of the uncountable within our universe. We are but a tiny player in the vast cosmic arena. It's possible that we are only special in our ability to perceive of the idea that we are special. It was said by Carl Sagan that astronomy is a humbling pursuit. However, on this humble dot, at this brief moment in time, lay the aggregate of our joy and suffering. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on the mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings, how eager they are to kill one another, how fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. And thank you for watching.